So as a fat person, I often dread medical appointments because of blatant medical fat phobia. Um, the last OB appointment I went to, uh, the provider blamed everything on my weight and told me that I needed to go on a medication that made me feel really terrible. This OB appointment that I just went to, I've been dreading and the provider was amazing. She asked me what my pronouns are. She asked me about my name. She made me feel super comfortable. Asked me about my trauma history so that she knew how to touch me in ways that were not harmful. She just was like, great. Um, and I was crying before getting my blood drawn because I just never have good experiences with medical, medical providers and so. What did you say? What the f did you just say? The last OB appointment I went to, uh, the provider blamed everything on my weight and told me that I needed to go on a diet, you fat. Now, listen, the one thing I want to say to that young lady we just heard from in the first clip is that there is no such thing as medical fat phobia. It doesn't even make sense. And also, if a previous doctor blamed most of your health issues on the fact that you're huge, it is because most of your health issues can be traced back to the fact that you're huge. Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I have a fairly quick and very crazy clown world update for you guys today. And as usual, we have absolutely no time to waste. So let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. Now, here we have a profile from a dating app. Now, I don't know if it's a lesbian dating app or a regular dating app. I don't do dating apps, but it's a dating app nonetheless. So here we have Mary, 24 years old, 47 miles away. Miles away from what? I don't know. The bio says, I may look 24, but I'm secretly 88. I love to I love to stick peanut butter between your toes and eat it like I just love first dates with peanut butter. What? All right, let's keep it moving with everybody's favorite paid establishment show, The Young Lad Harry. Now, in this clip, Harry talks about how terribly Donald Trump's campaign is going because, well, basically they got him hemmed up in a courtroom in New York City. However, some of you may recall that last week, Trump held a rally in New Jersey where 80 to 100,000 people showed up. It sounds like a pretty good fucking campaign rally to me. Roll it. Listen, I just want to talk about how crazy Donald Trump's presidential campaign is right now. So currently, four days a week, this guy is sitting in criminal court in New York City facing 34 felony charges for allegedly falsifying a bunch of business records to cover up the fact that he had an affair with an adult actress while his wife was sitting at home taking care of their newborn baby and he wanted to cover up the scandal so his election prospects in 2016 wouldn't be interfered with. He didn't want the American people knowing about the story. Meanwhile, while Donald Trump is not in court the days that he has off, he's posting campaign ads calling for a, quote, unified Reich taking language right from the Germans in World War II, if you're catching my drift here. That's Donald Trump's campaign right now. Why are people even thinking that this is a choice? Why are people even deciding between Joe Biden and Donald Trump? Joe Biden is the obvious choice. Good policy, good man, and even if you disagree with him, look at the alternative. Donald Trump, who's doing everything I just mentioned and more. This is the easiest choice as Americans will ever have to make. Biden 2024 every day. You are a f***ing moron. All right, next up we have this fellow who really isn't exhibiting too many signs of TDS. However, the way this guy is praising Joe Biden has to be some kind of illness in itself, right? Am I right? Roll it. Do you know who the most underrated person on the planet is? Based on what he's done so far, history will say he's one of the greatest ever. And yet many Americans are dismissive of his accomplishments and many belittle him. 
Well, he's no show horse. He is a workhorse and smart enough to surround himself with top flight professionals who collectively deliver extraordinary results. So do you know who the most underrated human is? The totality of his accomplishments, including on job growth, wage growth, drug costs, crime rates, guns, infrastructure, COVID, climate change, judicial appointments, diversity, bipartisanship, burn pits, student death, the stock market, the supply chain, reuniting separated children and saving American democracy from tyranny is, is astonishing. Now, the measure of this man is not in the way he walks or talks. It's, it's in the effectiveness of the way he works. Sure, he's no kid and it's not like I don't recognize his frailty too, and I don't love every single thing he's done, but when you look past the physical and recognize the results and ignore the right-wing ecosystems, lies and misinformation, and understand how aggressive his opponents have been in trying to stifle his progress any honest, objective person would have to say, particularly when compared to the incompetent fascist criminal he followed, this man's achievements are nothing short of spectacular. I say we should all sing his praises, honor him, respect him, thank him. He, our president, Joseph R. Biden, deserves our emphatic appreciation, and I am not afraid to say so. Are you retarded? All right, next up we have this lovely green-haired lady wearing a muzzle who says that she's been seeing a lot of trans people who are into clicker training, which is how you train a dog. Roll it. I've been seeing a lot of trans people say that they would be into clicker training, and I just want to put out there, um... Just know what you're getting into before you start that. And if you know what you're getting into, well then have fun. A few moments later. this stuff go too far pretty soon we'll be fucking dogs all right next up we have this short clip from the Cannes film festival of famous hollywood actress kate blanchett who has a net worth of a whopping 94 million dollars claiming she's part of the middle class roll it I'm white, I'm privileged, I'm middle class, and I think, you know, one can be accused of having a bit of a white saviour complex, but to be perfectly honest, um, my interaction with, uh, the, uh, with refugees in the, in the film, in the, in the field, and also in um, resettled environments has totally changed my perspective on, on the world. What the hell did you just say? I'm white, I'm privileged, I'm middle class. All right, next up we have this, I'm not quite for sure exactly what we're looking at here, so we'll just go with person. And what do you call that hairstyle? Hair horns? Anyway, this person still wants everyone to mask up and be afraid of the scamdemic, excuse me, plandemic, excuse me, pandemic, sorry, roll it. And just because we don't use the word pandemic, doesn't mean that it's going to stop existing. It seems like a lot of people think this means it's stopped existing, but it's still there. It's a virus, so it's going to keep doing what viruses do. It doesn't really care what word you call it. And for disabled people, what really hurts has been how we've been treated throughout the pandemic. Because from the very beginning, it's always been Oh, it's only disabled people who are dying. It's totally fine, because we don't care about them. And after all of that, it really hurts to see people celebrating and claiming that something's over when so many of us have died or become further disabled. And just in case anyone is wondering why you should care about the disabled community, one, we're human beings, and two, 
you can become disabled at any time. We don't have the privilege of no longer being COVID conscious. We have to still look out for ourselves because for disabled people, getting COVID can have much more severe ramifications. But to see everyone act like it's over and it's of no concern is really painful. Um, it just highlights how little everyone cares about us. For example, I've even had one of my coworkers tell me to my face that it's fine if I die because people's quote unquote freedom to not wear a mask is more important than our lives. This is really not an acceptable thing to say and it's not acceptable behavior. So I hope that helps tell you why you're not gonna see me celebrating. And one last point, if wearing a face mask is the biggest burden in your life, um, I would highly advise taking a moment to examine your privilege. Well, I'm gonna take this damn mask off. Hey, real quick, before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I, uh, I'm gonna let this loop on the screen. Now, why the hell does it look like this guy's in a dungeon somewhere? That's kind of creepy. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by our first sponsor is our great friend, Patty Howen. Patty, thank you so much for sponsoring yet another video. I really appreciate the continued love and support. Second sponsor of today's video is the YouTube channel, Life After Women. In the description of the channel is helping divorced men find purpose and meaning in their lives. Now, full transparency, couldn't find the link to the channel. I'm going to try to find it and put it in the description box below. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely check it out. Like I said, I will link that in the description box below. So once again, today's video sponsors are Patty Howen and the YouTube channel Life After Women. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below. And I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. All right, get this off the screen. I think we've all seen enough of this guy in his dungeon. Oof. Okay, that's not creepy. All right, since Pride Month is just around the corner, and trust me, I know most of you are very excited about that, we are going to watch this clip from Savannah Hernandez, who is a fantastic independent journalist, where she went to a Pride parade a few years back and asked a bunch of people different questions about their genders and sexualities and such. Roll it. Mask and queer. What's trans mask? Trans mask is like people under the non-binary umbrella at identifying like or presenting mask. Masculine? Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm trans and uh, on my sexuality is unlabeled. Um, I use he him pronouns. Yeah, and I use he they pronouns. Fluid. 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 Can you explain what that means to me a little bit more? Whatever turns you on. Pronouns. She, her, it. I feel like, honestly, honestly, it should not be a bad thing. Like, I've talked to people who go with they and them. And I'm like, well, in the grammar of things, how would you want to represent yourself? I was like, I mean, I guess it. Because it's like, you're, you're it. You're the it. Like, it shouldn't be a bad name. It should just be owned. Gay. Okay. Yes. Yes, I love... You identify it. She, she, her, oh. they. she. I guess you could call me gay. I'm homoflexible, really. I do like some women, but mostly men. I'm a male. I identify as a man. Um, as far as sexuality is concerned, I'm kind of open. Like, I mean, if you excite me, then you excite me, you know? I will forever support a child who wants to do whatever they want with their... I will always be there for any children who want to pursue drag, things that they are LGBT in any sort of way. I will always support that. I think you're all in the head. All right, guys, before we wrap the video up, I saw this picture and just had to share it with you guys. When I first saw it, I couldn't stop laughing. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is Hog Kitty. Now, Hog Kitty is actually a, I wouldn't really say conservative, but more of a right-leaning drag queen. And Hog Kitty mocks all this woke nonsense and tries to protect the kids. So Hog Kitty is on the right side of all this. 
So Cloud Kitty's got these temporary tattoos of Hillary and Barack and Bernie Sanders and Bill. And then the Biden-Harris one smack dab on his forehead. Oh, that's priceless. You look ridiculous. And that's actually part of Hog Kitty's whole shtick is to look as ridiculous as possible. Anyway, we're going to be wrapping it up with this clip from The View where Joy Behar says the most ridiculous thing that's probably ever been said on The View. And I know, I know, that's a bold statement, but judge for yourselves. Anyway, things are clearly getting very crazy out there, guys. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. And by the way, out there, well, that hat that you keep wearing, that red hat that says Make America Great Again, that tells people that you go along with this. So you might yes. as well just put a swastika on the hat. Don't well, do that. But Don't let's do that. Because we see it anyway. The bottom line is, this isn't good for any of us. I mean, this is what it comes down to. It's not good for any American. This is not the American way. This is not the promise of America. She doesn't always get it right, but we know we can fight to make it better. When you have someone who says, I'm going to get rid of all crit criticism, I'm going to get rid of mm -hmm. anything Dissent. that's dissenting, mm -hmm. this should make everybody really scared. One of the great things about this country is that you can stand here and say, you know what, I don't like how the country's being run. And you know that nobody's going to come and snatch you up for saying that. You want to keep it that way. That's why it's important. We'll be right back. Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? Uh, the things? And by the way, out there, well, that hat that you keep wearing, that red hat that says Make America Great Again, that tells people that you go along with this. So you might yeah. as well just put a swastika on the hat. Or, here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the f*** up. And you ain't black.